Welcome to The Bee's Knees, a podcast full of articles, interviews, clinical studies, and advice about knee surgery, physical therapy, and life after knee surgery. Hi, and welcome to The Bee's Knees podcast. This is your host, PJ Ewing. I've got some really good stuff for you today. We have an interview with Kishore Jivanandam. A little hard to say that, I'll be honest. Kishore is a PT, physical therapist, with lots of experience in the state of Michigan, working in a community-based setting, working in a home care uh, company for many years. I'll place links in the show notes and on the podcast webpage so you can refer to the company if you'd like, if you need home care in Michigan or would like to meet Kishore at some point to have him as your physical therapist. A good idea. He's wonderful, very, very gifted. And Kishore is going to take us through three major topics today, some general questions about knee recovery challenges uh, after knee surgery from his perspective. He's going to go into a nice description of what's needed for prehabilitation from his perspective, the importance of it, the value of it, and why you'd really want to prepare for a knee replacement surgery uh, in advance so that you do well afterwards. And then if you'd like to listen, uh, this is the optional portion. He does describe his uh, awareness, understanding, use of the X10 knee machine, and he's got some real insight there. But if you don't want to hear about the X10, you don't have to. That's at the end. So without much more, let me get into the interview. I will interject uh, throughout uh, in a couple key points just to clarify some things. Um, I think you'll be able to understand Kishore's words. He's got an accent a little bit, so I'll try to uh, interject once or twice to make sure it's really clear what we're listening to, but uh, I think it's very well worth uh, a good listen here. Uh, So let's let's get into it. Hi, I'm Kishore. I'm a physical therapist and I work for Advanced Home Care in Troy here in Michigan. And I've been working with Advanced for the last 10 years. I had worked uh, on a traditional physical therapy in a community-based setting in the past, wherein we do go out and recommend a strengthening program, gentle quadriceps strengthening and hamstring setting exercises. And uh, X10, we partnered with the Heli Orthopedics uh, in 2015. Okay, I'm back already, believe it or not. Two concepts you're about to hear about. One is called inhibition. And the other one is called muscle recruitment. You'll hear Kishore mention both of these things. I want to do a quick definitions right now so you're aware of what he says, and then it'll all make a lot more sense. Let's talk about inhibition. This is marked weakness of the quadriceps muscles, and that is typically observed following an injury, surgery, or pathology affecting the knee joint. This is partly due to ongoing neural inhibition that prevents the central nervous system from fully activating the quadriceps muscle, a process known as arthrogenic muscle inhibition or AMI. Important. So this is the inability of the nervous system to activate the muscles. Okay, the second concept which uh, Kishore references is called muscle recruitment. Let's go into that. Motor unit recruitment refers to the activation of additional motor units to accomplish an increase in contractile strength in a muscle. Contractile meaning contraction, the ability for the muscle to contract. Uh, and a single motor unit consists of one motor neuron and all the muscle fibers it stimulates. So we're really getting into the muscle to recruit one motor neuron to activate that portion of the muscle that that controls. Okay, let's listen to Kishore as he describes what it's like after a knee replacement surgery, what kind of a reaction is the body going through and, and how do you deal with that? The general expectations are your knee is going to be swelled up, you will have tightness in your knee, pain is going to be part of the surgery. But in terms of anything beyond that, you shouldn't be much worried about. But definitely physical therapy and mobility is the key important things that you wanted to address Uh, following any knee surgeries. So the initial few days, you're going to work more on the range of motion, decreasing the amount of swelling in the knee and keeping your legs iced and elevated because that decreases the amount of inflammation following the surgery and thereby having very little chance for developing a scar tissue in your knee joints. 
Generally, after a knee surgery, when your knee joint is swelled up, there is a lot of exudation and fluid built up. These fluids can ultimately result to a scar tissue formation, wherein your range of motion can be restricted or maybe even making it hard for you to regain your range of motion. So exercising and moving, mobilizing your joint uh, helps prevent, decrease these uh, exudation, uh, thereby helping you prevent development of a uh, scar tissue. Recovery after following a total knee replacement is not only the range of motion, but also the control. The quadriceps goes into a condition called as a, a stage called as a inhibition, and uh, wherein these fibers do not act and do not get recruited. So a facilitation just to let the body know and especially the muscle know that it is okay to move is needed. So this facilitation uh, helps in breaking up this quadriceps inhibition and thereby the control of the joint is returned. So most patients what happens is when they don't have this control uh, there is a good chances of them buckling and having a fall. So recruitment and breaking the cycle of uh, early inhibition is more important in the recovery process during the initial few weeks following your surgery. I hope you have your pencils and paper out and are taking good notes, some really useful things. Okay, quick intervention. We're gonna talk about another concept as Kishore gets into some, some new topics here. The concept that I wanna go through for you right now is called proprioception. You may be familiar with this, but let's just go through a quick definition and then you'll be ready for Kishore's next comments. Proprioception is the medical term that describes the ability to sense the orientation of your body in your environment. It allows you to move quickly and freely without having to consciously think about where you are in space or in your environment. Proprioception is a constant feedback loop within your nervous system, telling your brain what position you are in and what forces are acting upon your body at any given point in time. Um, so that's one concept that Kishore is going to describe briefly. I want to make sure you're fully aware of what that is. We also hear from Kishore about heel to toe gait and compensating for a stiff knee, which requires some strengthening uh, and some muscle retraining worked with personally with certain patients who had had the fall. And as you know, there, your knee joint has uh, certain specialized uh, receptors and proprioception, which tells you where your joint is, is one of them. And following surgery with the amount of swelling and the stiffness, some of these receptors do not communicate better so apparently this you as a patient they may not be in a position to tell whether the knee is bent or is it straight whether it can take the weight bearing and that is one of the reasons where you can have more falls earlier uh, in the recovery process but again uh, retraining and uh, regular exercises and use of mobilizations should help you decrease those fluids and thereby help you recover your knee joint range of motion. Your quadriceps uh, is a muscle that's in the front of your thigh, and that muscle is responsible primarily for straightening your knee, which we call it as an extension. Your hamstring, which is on the back of your thigh, is the flexors, and they help in bending your knee. The calf muscles, also known as gastrosoleus muscle, are responsible both for straightening your knee, which is extension, as well as to control and propel, your, propel yourself forward by doing your plantar flexion, your foot movements. So basically for strengthening, uh, you need to, you wanted to strengthen all the three groups of your muscles, your quadriceps, which is in the front, your hamstrings, which is in the back of your thigh, and your calf muscle for getting the maximum results, okay. benefits. So when you normally walk, what we call it as a bipedal ambulation, we call it as a, it's called as a heel toe gait. For you to do a heel toe gait, which is the normal way of walking, you need absolute control of both your knee, your hip, 
and your ankle joints working in a certain synchronized motion. Generally, what we notice post-operatively with these patients, they generally tend to maintain a stiff knee and they try to use more of their hip and bring their legs forward to walk. But we want you to retrain and walk with the heel toe gait, so which involves your hip to bend, your knee to bend, and your ankle to move up, so or your foot to move up, so your heel can touch the floor. For this synchronization to happen, we need absolute control over your knee joint and also range of motion in your knee joint and strength to withstand your body weight. This is where we use the assistive devices like canes and walkers to help you support your body weight while retaining how to walk. So strengthening is a key component of any rehab program following knee surgeries. For you to get back to your daily activities and functional activities and things that you wanted to do like walk outside, you need absolute control. Control is starts with strengthening. So you need to start strengthening your muscles on a continuum basis for you to be able to walk and get to the activities and functional activities that you wanted to do. Kishore now moves into prehabilitation, strengthening and exercising before surgery. He does reference a strength grade, and I want to just go through the grading system so you're aware of what, what it is, and it'll make Kishore's quick comment about going down a grade of strength make a little bit more sense. The severity of muscle weakness can be classified into different grades based upon the following criteria. Grade zero, no contraction or muscle movement. That's the worst. Grade one, a trace of contraction, but no movement at the joint. Grade two, movement at the joint with gravity eliminated. Grade three, movement against gravity, but not against added resistance. Grade four, movement against external resistance with less strength than usual. And then grade five, which is normal strength. Okay, let's listen to Kishore. Patients generally tend to lose muscle strength at least by a grade, and this is so true for the quadriceps especially. So generally speaking, it is a good idea to strengthen your muscle uh, by all means prior to your surgery, even three or four weeks prior to the surgery, as long as your knee pain is within control and it is allowing you to exercise without increasing or aggravating your pain. I believe that as long as the patient's pain is under control and they are well motivated, they should not have any trouble doing exercises prior to the surgery. And uh, other than that, I don't see any reasons why someone would not take the time to strengthen prior to the surgery. In general, your pre-surgical status determines the functional outcomes in a larger way. The better your strength, and better your range of motion deficits are, the better you are going to be doing after the surgery. So also research says that the amount of time that you had been going through a certain amount of knee range of motion deficits and pain also determines the outcomes. Patients generally lose their muscle strength after surgery, right. at least by a grade. So it is recommended that they do a pre-surgical or a prehab for strengthening their quadriceps and hamstrings. And uh, I would say any strengthening process at least about three to four weeks prior to a surgery would be a good starting point to get some beneficial effects out of those strengthening exercises. I don't have any uh, hard uh, number of uh, uh, protocols to go with, but in general, two to three times a week uh, prior to the surgery for at least three to four weeks is a general consensus for any strengthening program. Generally, the geriatric patients, they are already weak in their muscles. And prior to that, the longer the duration of that they, under, they went through this arthritis and decreased range of motion process, the muscle strength are generally tend to be more weaker. So 
uh, the general population would be geriatric populations are ideally a more better candidates to start uh, strengthening even prior to the surgery. Oh, that's good. Any strengthening program prior to the surgery is going to be beneficial uh, for the patient. Uh, if there is a tool like x why not use it uh, to get your strengthening begin? As long as uh, your pain is within uh, controllable limits and you're able to handle it. Okay, well, that was uh, useful and gets into some real detail from a physical therapist that we trust. Kishore is wonderful. I will suggest that you either listen to the next part or not. If you want to hear about Kishore's opinion about the X10 knee machine, listen on, dear friend. If you're not interested in this specific recovery pattern program piece of equipment, then you're done. And thanks for listening, and I'll see you on the next visit. Uh, but this is Kishore describing his interaction with patients and their responses to the X10 and what he thinks of the machine itself for knee surgery recovery. I've worked with uh, several knee patients in the past, uh, and uh, the biggest challenge for these patients are pain, swelling, and uh, decreased ability to move about after these knee surgeries. Uh, the recoveries, I've seen different varying rates, but uh, Yexton definitely, I have to say, has a place uh, in the recovery of these patients uh, in terms of helping them to be more functional at an earlier time point. Traditionally, people have either had a mobilization and strengthening programs without any equipment, or they also had a CPM machine uh, to do get their range of motion and strength, range of motion especially. Uh, X10 is unique in matters where the patient is in complete control of, and is also able to visualize what, how much they are able to move and the ease of uh, use of those controls. And besides, the patient is also in a sitting position as opposed to a laying down position, which helps the patient to be more aware of their surroundings, more aware of the uh, visual controls which we have to offer. And besides, on the X10, they are able to control the range of motion uh, in accordance to their ability to tolerate and uh, their stiffness. When patients are in better control, they are, it encourages them to explore and they are, as opposed to uh, being apprehensive, they are more relaxed and that helps in relaxing this body and relaxing the joint itself. And they are more, uh, it helps them to get into those exercise modules and they're more pro for their exercises. Patients uh, with X10, especially we noticed it in patients who had had knee surgeries in the past and had been either through a traditional home-based physical therapy or a rehab, or have used a CPM machine on their previous knee surgeries. So when they are able to use X10 for the other knee or even for a revision surgery, they are truly able to compare the differences and the convenience of using the X10. And uh, that's where we saw our surprises coming in because patients were able to compare the differences and they felt more better using the X10 rather than their previous experience with uh, traditional physical therapy. Uh, definitely, patients who are, who are on X10 are feeling more comfortable using the equipment itself and also are more willing to increase their range of motion and try out for more uh, uh, time durations. And uh, I would say that definitely this is a big factor uh, in terms of patient perspective using a CPM and uh, or any other traditional physical therapy, they are more willing to participate and they are more relaxed and they are more comfortable using these extend machines. The range of motion in general, uh, we have seen notice that there is a quite a bit of increase in range of motion uh, in these patients using extend. And a, big, a number of factors can be attributed. Like I said before, the patient's comfort level is definitely greater using this extend. And also, X10 allows certain features where they can advance 
further range of motion as long as it allows them and they are more comfortable and the patients are able to increase those range of motions on their own. Initial focus on a therapy knee program would be to increase on the knee range of motion and subsequently or hand in hand I would say strengthening goes along. So for a patient who's finishing two weeks or three weeks in home care and going into the outpatient, they are already having enough range of motion and now they are way ahead of most of the people and they start into strengthening modules. So thereby, uh, range of motion and the joint stiffness and decreased range of motion affecting their function is all out of the way and these patients progress further in strengthening and improvement in their functional statuses. One thing I can talk about uh, extend is patients are more comfortable using this equipment and also they are more compliant with their range of motion exercises. Uh, they are more motivated because they don't have to wait for the therapist to say if they have increased the range of motion for that day or not because they're able to look at the screen and they also see the feeling in the knee. They are able to feel it and it becomes a, a further motivation for them to say, okay, I can move so much today. Uh, and then they compare themselves uh, in terms of how much they are able to do day by day. And also maintaining the logs they record this log, so it is forcing them to look at their numbers. Either they are performing at the same level or they are improving, and automatically what happens is they are wanting to beat their own numbers and they allow them a little small increments on a daily basis and even as a matter of fact within the exercise sessions. So that is something really nice about having those patients engaged on their own therapy and that's great. And that's a wrap. Thanks, Kishore, for the comments about the X10. Uh, also, it was wonderful to hear all the detail about first general recovery and then a little bit about prehab, both important topics. And it's great to have a physical therapist on the show to uh, get his perspective in this case. If you want to reach us, it's thebeesneespodcast at gmail.com. If you want more detail or want to visit the episode webpage, that's at x10therapy.com. Remember, you can always just go to the bottom of the homepage and find the blogs, or you can go to the blog tab. We have email series for you. We've got private discussion groups on Facebook for you. Lots of very free and wonderful, helpful stuff uh, beyond all the information you may find about our beautiful X10 machine. So again, thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time. To learn more, visit x10therapy.com, 1-855-910-5633. Just a reminder, it's a huge help if you subscribe to, rate, and review our podcast. It helps people find us. X10, back to full strength.